I really don't think there's any show that got as ridiculous as Once Upon a Time on ABC. What did you do to Zelina? It tries to retell the story of all of these well-known fairy tale characters, but then they sort of just retrofit them into a really generic small town TV drama. Sneezy, you okay? Sneezy! Like, in this world, Red Riding Hood is the werewolf. And I'm the werewolf. But she's learning to talk about it. I ate my boyfriend. Look. You're Frankenstein. It's the kind of show where twists include finding out that the guy Snow White was having an affair with while she was cursed to believe she was another person is actually Dr. Frankenstein. One night stand. One night stand. I guess this show can't be too bad. That's some pretty juicy drama. How do you think it makes the prince feel? You're not my prince. Who are you, Will? I'm not telling you I'm Dr. Frankenstein. Sometimes the show does something very cool. People like their version of the Wicked Witch, but the Wicked Witch is the sweatiest, greasiest Wicked Witch you've ever seen. And we get this scary, edgy, 3D model redesign of the flying monkeys. They were already scary. You don't need to make them look like Venom. Venom web. But I will admit this show certainly does a lot of things I've never seen. <laughs> Yeah, this is Billiam, and as a kid, I stopped watching Once Upon a Time right before what many people consider to be the show's best arc started. Evil Peter Pan! Between flashbacks to the fairy tale realm and stories in the town of Storybrook, Maine, where each of the characters has a new identity and memories until the daughter of Snow White is able to fulfill the prophecy and break the curse and return everyone's memories, this show is very bloated. It's a gargantuan mess of a world that makes the story of Kingdom Hearts seem rather plain and simple by comparison. The number of, like, people places, things, backstories, and like character crossovers is just too much to handle. It's like we can defeat Peter Pan if we trap him in Pandora's box, but Rumpelstiltskin first has to find his son with the blood globe. Then we get the golden compass to find the magic beans to activate the portal before the evil queen gets the spell book. She has to steal it from her mom, the eviler queen, the queen of hearts. The villains will either force choke you like they're in Star Wars or tear your heart out like they're the guy from Temple of Doom. All of them do that. It's their go-to move. No, 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 no! Ah! And then the good guys find out true love's kiss is like their go-to move, so everyone's just like making out all the time for a plot device. But at its heart, it, this is a show about humanizing all of these characters, these people, despite their troubled past, who have to get together and learn to put aside their differences to raise a single child, Henry. Everyone does it for that little guy. Do it for Henry. When the show was airing, I watched it for nearly two seasons before just stopping. I kept up with it by buying episodes on iTunes because I was in the hospital. And years later, I'm still happy I used my money on that because I can see exactly where I stopped watching Once Upon a Time. I stopped watching three episodes before the end of season two. I thought I might die. Once Upon a Time was not what I was gonna spend my life on. Blonde! But after posting my last video, I realized what a mistake I could have made. There's some really good storytelling and finality in season three, but then they just undo it all because Frozen made a billion dollars at the box office. And they wrote the Frozen characters into the show and like apparently reenacted the whole movie. This was seen as the show's full transformation into a marketing arm of Disney. So let's explain why I stopped watching Once Upon a Time in its second season and why many people People think the third season is the best one. This video is brought to you by Manscaped, a global men's lifestyle brand trusted by over 8 million men worldwide. When your lawn is in need of care, Manscaped is who you go to. This is what's called their Performance Package 4.0. It's the ultimate bundle in a grooming, hygiene, trimming. The Lawnmower 4.0 electric trimmer features a cutting edge ceramic blade designed to reduce grooming incidences. I'll tell you what, you can even shave while camping with an LED light and up to 90 minutes on a charge. This waterproof bad boy has you shower shavers backs. This trimmer will look great on your tool belt. And speaking of tools on your tool belt, it's the Weed Whacker 2.0. Woo! I'll tell you what, this toughie is ready for the toughest nose any hair jobs out there. With a cordless charging system and LED lights on the front, you can always see how much juice you have. To get this awesome package with the lawnmower 4.0 and the Weed Whacker 2.0 and all these other goodies, go to manscaped.com and use promo code Billiam to get 20% off of your Order. And thank you to Manscaped for putting gas in our lawnmowers. Yeehaw! There is always so much going on in Once Upon a Time. In Storybrooke, everyone is just trying to adjust to their lives, having the memory of both their Earth and fantasy identities. Double the pain. Double the suffering. <laughs> 
wants to kill the evil queen, Regina, because of the curse. However, everyone agrees to learn to appreciate their new Storybrooke lives in addition to their old lives. Instantly, Emma and Snow get sucked into the Mad Hatter's hat, which is a portal, and they end up in the Enchanted Forest, where Snow White and everyone's from. They learn to love each other, having recently found out they are mother and daughter and work together to return back to Storybrooke. Meeting old friends, the show is given an opportunity to continue having flashback stories in every single episode. Like, oh boy, it's Snow White's friend, Lancelot. Did you know in the past, Snow White and Prince Charming had their wedding officiated by Lancelot, given to an audience of one? It was Prince Charming's mother with an arrow in her chest. Charming demanded she run inside. There were dangerous men about, but her nosiness won in the end. Son. Shame on her. She dies after they kiss. Oh, looks like somebody caught the wedding bouquet. You know what that means. She's getting married next. So anyways, turns out Lancelot isn't even alive anymore. Instead, the evil queen's mother, Cora, is posing as Lancelot. Ah! She's evil. You see where good gets you? With everyone having remembered who Regina is, she is tempted to change for the better because she still wants a good relationship with Henry. The Evil Queen and Rumpelstiltskin are easily the best characters in the show. They're really great, until they're not. Queen made the curse to have a fresh start and she did not adopt Henry knowing his birth mother is Emma. She just wants to be a good mom. And his connection to Emma makes it difficult for her to have a fresh start. Grandpa Charming watches out for Henry because he doesn't trust his adoptive mother anymore. Prince Charming has never really even had to be a father. I mean, he and his daughter Emma are now the same age and they've just met. That's how the curse worked, you see. All the fantasy characters came over to the real world and they didn't age for 28 years. And that's how old Emma is. And I can only imagine they were around 26 when they had her. Henry is so hungry and David comes back with some sandwiches, but they're actually wooden swords. Why, why'd you wrap them like that? He says, be a knight like me. Here's a whole fucking horse. This guy sucks. In the Enchanted Forest, Emma and Snow White team up with Mulan and Sleeping Beauty. They meet that sexy guy from Tumblr, Captain Hook. It's all about the Tumblers. I know some of you remember him and his only outfit very vividly. He's a serial harasser, always three inches from every woman's face, but he plays it so flirty. Captain Hook tries so hard to be a bad boy, but really he just wants to be loved. He comes to the real world where even the evil queen has become friends with everyone. He's sad, but oh man, don't pull out the telescope and look at them in the diner having a good time. Anyways, beans are huge this season. Take us to the beans. 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 They activate portals. Everyone wants beans to get where they need to go. Jorge Garcia comes on this season and only this season to play Anton the Giant. We learn that he is the last giant alive because Charming's evil twin brother James and his lover Jack and the Beanstalk, who's actually a girl, killed all the giants except for him. Why did they kill them? because they're the ones who grow the beans. A preserved cutting from the stalk. Nothing can grow here. You will find a new land. It's tough to even watch. Arlo? <laughs> Arlo! But upon meeting Emma- Go ahead, kill me. Anton the giant realizes that not all humans are evil. Could have killed me. That's just simple good writing. Now they grow portal beans in Storybrooke and Anton even makes new friends, the seven dwarves. Apparently portals are hard to come by in Once Upon a Time, but that's a lie because they're actually everywhere and used very frequently. The portals are how you get between the different realms. Cora via portal becomes another instigative character, just like Rumpelstiltskin, sort of playing the same kind of antagonistic role as that guy. They were a thing, by the way. As you'll learn, everyone in the show is either related or has kissed. The evil queen hates Snow White because when Snow White was a child, she told her mother, Cora, about her boyfriend, Daniel. Cora killed the evil queen's boyfriend, Daniel. Why would she do that to her daughter's boyfriend? So the evil queen has brought Frankenstein to Storybrooke to resurrect her boyfriend. He does it and Daniel comes back as evil. He goes after Henry. Regina comes in to save Henry, but you know what? You know who put him in danger? David. He's the one who told Henry to go down to the horse stables. You can't trust a kid with this guy. He sucks. So now the evil queen has to kill her ex-boyfriend, only broke up with him because she thought he was dead, to save Henry. 
but Henry convinces her to help bring Emma and Snow White back, her mortal enemies, because he knows she'll do it for Henry. The many storylines of season two make this already bloated show very bloated, though the opening of the season had me pretty excited. It's this like funky montage of the character Neil revealed to be Henry's birth father walking down the streets of New York City. It has a great handheld energy and helps us to want to follow this mysterious new character. In my opinion, it's how the whole earthly realm should feel in Once Upon a Time, instead of like this. I mean, how cool would it be if magic acted differently on Earth? Like Regina does a magic spell to track where a truck has been and the streets just light up the tire's path. It's so clearly an effect. And in terms of the story, she is not being subtle about what she's doing. What if instead of the simple digital effects, we had like more earthly methods that Regina could be guided to where she wants to go? Like street lights flickering, the wind whooshing and animals cooing. I guess it's kind of the downside of digital effects being so easy to execute. Sometimes you just don't have time Time to think about an out of the box solution. Anyways, Neil has a kick ass introduction because he's later revealed to be Balefire, the missing son of Rumpelt Stiltskin. That means Rumpel is Henry's grandfather. So, should I call you Grandpa now? Call me whatever you like. Everyone in the story is connected to Henry. He finds himself in the middle of it. His adoptive mother is the evil queen, his biological mother is Emma. Her parents are Snow White and the prince, meaning his adoptive mother is also his step grandmother, making Cora his adoptive grandmother and step great grandmother. And she once made out with Rumpelstiltskin, Henry's grandfather. And Belle is becoming his step-grandma, a step-grandma who is the same age as his mom. Apologies for grandpa, he likes younger women. Things get complicated because Rumpelstiltskin was once told in a prophecy that Henry, a young boy, will be his downfall. So Rumpelstiltskin plots Henry's death, but will he really go through with it? The boy will be your undoing. Then I'll just have to kill him. Grandpa Rumple buys Henry a New York City hot dog. Yummy, thinks Henry. Maybe he'll choke, thinks Rumple. <laughs> Why would you do that? But his adoptive mother, Regina, is just as bad. Henry wants the Queen and Snow White to get along regardless of their past. He wants Neil and Rumple to get along regardless of their past. He wants Emma and Neil to get back together regardless of their past, and they all try to do it. They all try to do it for Henry. Neil and Henry develop a father-son relationship very quickly, the very kind of relationship Neil never had with Rumple, because Rumple is the dark one, and he let him fall down the portal alone. See ya, Neil. Rumple hates portals. I think Neil is a very great addition to the cast. He's from the magical realm, but he's so grounded in reality. He's a regular dude. And when Neil talks, Rumpel sits his ass down and listens. Rumpel abandoned Neil for power and later killed his mother because she was hooking up with Captain Hook. More like Captain Hookup. That's right, Neil's mom, Henry's grandma, was jollying on Hook's Roger. Everyone is connected somehow. Will Henry's biological mother, Emma, hook up with Captain Hook? Who would be a part of your f***ed up family story? I'm related to Spider-Man and Persephone, the goddess of fertility and harvest. <laughs> Rumpel Stillskin is also the crocodile from Peter Pan because Captain Hook calls him a crocodile because he's so scaly and gross. And then in retribution, he cuts off Hook's hand like the crocodile from Peter Pan. What's your name? Crocodile. <laughs> Hook just sort of manifested that. Should have read the book, idiot. Tick tock, dearie. There's always so much fanfare when a character appears on Once Upon a Time. Like, who's this guy selling beans with a little red hat? It's Smee from Peter Pan, Captain Hook's sidekick Smee. It's f***ing Smee. He's on Once Upon a Time. The audience goes wild. Finally, Captain Hook is locked and loaded. That was a real sound effect, by the way. Captain Hook runs away from Rumpelstiltskin using a bean to get to Neverland. He beans out of there, where I'm sure he'll meet peanut butter boy himself, Peter Pan. Uh. Who, I assure you, has a fucked up place on Henry's family tree. Is it like his brother or something? Sorry, Once Upon a Time fans, I do not like Rump Bell. Bell from Beauty and the Beast and Rumpelstiltskin rewritten to be the Beast is just not my favorite ship. Not because of their noticeable age difference, 
chemistry or the fact that I want to be the one who kisses the sexy lips that makes that laugh. <laughs> but because in order to fix the perceived flaws of Beauty and the Beast's relationship in the Disney story, they end up making it a whole lot worse. In the Disney story, she changes custody with her father. And once upon a time, she has to be with Rumpelstiltskin or else the ogres are going to destroy Belle's kingdom and everybody she loves. Also, Rumpelstiltskin is a psycho killer. Robin Hood tries to steal from Rumpelstiltskin. So Rumpelstiltskin tries to skin him alive. <laughs> But don't you know, all magic comes with a price. And as a consequence, Robin Hood is recast after this episode. What happens when you cross Rumpelstiltskin? Yeah. Belle's faith in Rumpel allows him to see the good in people, which I like. He spares Robin Hood's life. I think here in the Once Upon a Time universe, maybe Rumpelstiltskin and Belle can still have these positive impacts in each other's lives without being romantically involved. Rumpelstiltskin becomes nice because of Belle, but in Storybrooke, Belle loses her memories and reverts back to being Lacey. That sounds an awful lot like Lacey. Who the hell is Lacey? A bad girl type who loves alcohol. Mr. Gold beats the sh out of a dude for making out with his girl, Lacey. He's Rumpel still simp, but Lacey loves it when he acts this way. She's not at all like Belle. Also, Belle's dad, Maurice, hates that she's with this freak. You're a monster, Rumpelstiltskin. But then he's still invited to the wedding. What's their Thanksgiving like? So Snow White accidentally kills the evil queen's mom just when she was learning to have a good relationship with her. And now once again, she blames Snow White for ruining her life. It was your mom both times. Despite season two's villain being built up frustratingly just to be used to reset Regina and Snow's relationship, after doing it for Henry all season. I've now accepted that the Evil Queen has about seven seasons of problems to get through. They, I was really hoping they'd sort of move past it all and maybe not just reset. After the Queen of Hearts, Neil's tease at the beginning of the season is bookended with the first chapter of his life after being separated from his father, because he wouldn't jump in the portal with him. In his time after the portal, Neil, still called Bellfire, is portaled out into the bedroom of the Darlings from Peter Pan. Peter Pan's shadow is like a stand-like extension of his soul. Like the Pied Piper, Peter Pan sends his shadow out into the night to visit and kidnap the Darlings and probably other children. But Bellfire realizes is the ill intent and is able to help the darlings yeah! fight him off. During this flashback story, the whole town of Storybrooke, Maine has been bamboozled by a guy named Greg. This motherfucker is Greg. Full stop. It's not Greg, AKA the son of Rumpelstiltskin. It's not Greg, AKA previously he was known as the fucking pirate wearing the fez in Captain Hook's crew, or even the bandana wearing muscular pirate from Captain Hook's crew. It's regular old Greg who stumbled into Storybrooke as a kid with his dad. Regina ruined their lives and now he's back for revenge. Along with Neil's New York girlfriend, Tamara, who is actually Greg's girlfriend, Tamara? Oh my God, they're so aligned romantically. They must be aligned in their goals as well. The kissing lets me know, thank you. Anyways, Greg and Tamara think they're hired by some group against magic, not really knowing they're working for Peter Pan, who loves magic, evil magic. So they get Regina's failsafe diamond, which will destroy Storybrooke. I guess Regina just built this into the curse in case she like, up too badly and decided she needed to kill everyone. Like, oops, somebody said something awkward at a party. Emma and Regina finally put aside their differences to team up and save Storybrooke, but it was a ruse. Greg actually just wants to kidnap Henry and take him to Peter Pan in Neverland. So Greg bean portals out of there, but our guys got beans too, and they go after him. This cliffhanger is very fun and I stopped watching right before it happened. The relationship between Emma, Snow, and Regina does not reset. They continue to do it for Henry. I just needed to be patient for a few more episodes. While I think there's fun to be had in the dramatized episodes of these fantasy characters' lives, I do not think the concept and story format is so great the show needs to continue on and on. Emma breaking the curse at the end of season one provided a lot of finality to me initially, and I don't think season two was able to hook me to keep watching. I feel pretty bad about this since so many people in the last video commented that season three was this show at its best. However, I'm not even sure I would have gotten around to season three, even if I had seen those last few episodes. Let me tell you, you would not know that season three is peak once upon a time 
from these promotional photos. I saw these and it confirmed to me that I made the right choice stopping watching this show. I mean, those green screen effects weren't gonna be any better in my memory after looking at this. ABC pulled these photos, but then fans hated the official photos they ended up releasing anyways because they resembled Lost too much, saying it was uncreative. And to top it all off, fans were promised to see a new clip from season three if the Facebook page for Once Upon a Time got to three million followers. Three million for season three. And it did, but ABC thought nobody would notice if they showed a clip that they've already showed off earlier in the year. People noticed. All this backlash had people asking if Disney was taking Once Upon a Time fans for granted. Disney taking its fans for granted? Season three starts in Neverland, the first realm outside the enchanted forest to be explored in depth. Peter Pan's youth is dying, and the only way to stay a boy is to have the heart of the truest believer, which happens to be Henry. So the lost boys swoop him up. Peter Pan is freaky towards Henry. Do it for him, as in become him. The one who's in trouble is Henry. But you're Henry. Not anymore. Thank you. Meanwhile, Emma, Hook, Rumpelstiltskin, Snow White, David, and Regina arrive in Neverland where they go after Pan and have some juicy dramatic side plots. Like, did you know that Regina and Tinkerbell used to know each other and that Tinkerbell's no longer a fairy because of Regina? They've got a history. The misguided Tinkerbell is assigned to help Regina find her new love, the new Robin Hood, her soulmate. But Regina doesn't follow through for Tinkerbell. Tinkerbell's powers are taken by the blue fairy and she flops on the ground so hard. Oh my God. I know this show has to move fast, but they did not have to do her that bad. Regina will eventually be reunited with Robin Hood, but for now she and Tinkerbell are able to make but Tinkerbell stresses the only way to leave Neverland is with Peter Pan's permission. Otherwise, they'll have to stay on the island, which is so much like Lost. Oh my God. You know, the creators of the show worked on Lost and they will not let you forget it. Between Emily DeRaven having an amnesia plot line in both shows and just characters dropping lines from Lost like dead is dead. Dead is dead. Dead. Is dead. They will not allow me to avoid making comparisons to Lost. <laughs> and I am lost. Ah! I still have a very hard time buying the drama of this show. It has its moments for sure, but in Once Upon a Time, the sheer amount of character introductions is wild. I can't look away. It's the best background noise to watch while I'm writing videos about Lost. It's coming, I promise. I said the show can put a fun spin on an old story, and I do think Peter Pan being a psychopathic adult in a child's body is kind of a fun way to write the character and the eternal youth angle. He's a good villain, especially because Captain Hook has been set up as an anti-hero so significantly beforehand. And Rumple being the crocodile tells us he plays an important part. The crazy melodramatic story of Once Upon a Time could not avoid putting Peter Pan on the family tree. You see, he's Rumpelstiltskin's daddy. He's Henry's great grandfather. It all makes sense now. In a flashback, it's explained that Rumpelstiltskin wanted to take his loser father to Neverland so they could have a new life. Rumpelstiltskin's just a little boy. Baby Rumpel is given a bean. Wait, Rumpel liked portals and beans before? No wonder why Neil hates him. What if there was some place we could start over? But his father betrays him, choosing to stay in Neverland and hold on to his eternal youth. Baby Rumpel is grabbed by the shadow who makes him look at his father who transforms into Peter Pan. Imagine if Rumpel knew that was Peter Pan, he'd be even more shocked. Kid, look, that'll be Peter Pan one day. Peter Pan is an evil, power-hungry father, and as the final boss, ends up working very well. At this point, it'd be strange if he wasn't on the family tree. Rumpel Stiltskin sticks up to his daddy and dies for Henry, allowing the boy to be his downfall, dying to protect him. However, Peter Pan has activated the failsafe diamond after all, and Regina decides to reverse the curse to save everyone. Just like before, the cost of the curse is somebody she loves, so she selflessly tells Emma to leave with Henry, offering them new memories and a good life in New York City, baby. Everyone says goodbye hastily, but just for a little too long. Like, come on, get on with it. And Emma and Henry drive away as images of Storybrooke in her rear view mirror flash for a few final times before ultimately forgetting the adventure she and her son went on to be reunited. The story is a reunion of Emma and Henry and the redemption of the queen and Rumpelstiltskin who hurt their family previously, keeping them all apart. And thanks to Regina, the two drive away, having known and loved each other as if they were never separated. This 
beautiful ending is upended through one of the best and worst transitions I have ever seen. In their New York City apartment, Henry and Emma, they play Diablo 3 together. It's a piece of product placement and they transition between the gameplay, the product placement, and David, now in the Enchanted Forest. Incredible, holy shit. No moment to sit on it. No moment to breathe. With that ending in mind, just undone with product placement. So Captain Hook comes to New York to get Emma to come back to Storybrooke and he convinces her by showing her that the new boyfriend she's dating is a flying monkey sent by the Wicked Witch of the West. The Wicked Witch of the West is revealed to be Regina's sister. Why did they do her like that? Rumpelstiltskin is resurrected when Neil sacrifices himself and Rumpel kills the Wicked Witch of the West character which is resurrected in the next season. But her death triggers a time portal for Captain Hook and Emma to go into. Whoa! They have an adventure that allows them to admit they're in love and that Emma belongs in Storybrooke. She was always a part of the story because of time travel. Okay, I get it. It's a more fan-pleasing ending and goes along with the theme that their new lives and their old lives both mattered. It's nice. Except when they go back to Storybrooke, they bring somebody from Regina's past. Robin Hood's missing wife. Emma didn't even know it was Robin Hood's missing wife. She was to be executed by Regina in the past. And now Robin Hood leaves her to be with his old past wife. Regina thinks Emma did it on purpose. You see where good gets you? Always ruining her life. They're reset again. Everything is back to the way it was. Characters are reset and guess what? They brought Elsa with them from the past. Just as you were made to see all of this emotional development undone, here comes Elsa. By season three, it became apparent that Once Upon a Time would be continuously introducing new characters and resetting other characters to just be a part of this ever persisting world. Like the seven dwarves are still around, but they don't play into the plot anymore. They integrate Tiny the Giant into their group, but then he just leaves the next season. She made me small. The dwarves are so wild because frequently their whole like purpose is to just show up on screen and give you an identifying clue as to which one of the seven dwarves they are as like a little joke. <laughs> like, oh, that's Sneezy. That's definitely happy. He's so happy. I bet Dopey's the little stoner guy. Hey, where's our pal Grumpy? He had an episode dedicated to him back in season one. Has he just gone away? No, nope, he's a regular in six seasons and only gets one episode dedicated to him. Okay, this show is so wild. It started as like the public domain Avengers with a little bit of a Disney flavor because Disney made it, but it totally evolved into a part of Disney's marketing arm. The show was picked up for a third season because Oz the Great and Powerful did well at the box box office and then they wrote the Wicked Witch into the show. Then Frozen does a billion dollars at the box office and they write Elsa into the show. It's really funny to see things like Winnie the Pooh go into the public domain and people just make silly, stupid, uncreative, scary versions of that character. But you know what? Disney doesn't even respect their most batshit fan fiction crazy versions of their characters. I want to see Elsa fall into the public domain and I want to see one million shitty Frozen parody horror movies made that Disney can't do anything about. See ya. Guys, there's a Cinnabon this year. First play night. And we're going on a quest like in the book. Is there anything that can make this day better? Is more frosting. <laughs>